Greetings, once again we meet for a new learning. Today we will now indulge ourselves with files and folders. We will try to understand what are the capabilities of our software in order to work with the files and folders. So that is going to be the purpose of this particular demonstration. And uh, this demonstration because you know all the topics are pretty much interlinked with each other. We will also touch base with a couple of you know concepts that we've already done. So it will be a, a recap of some of the you know features that we have gone and explored earlier. Uh, so let me take a moment first and quickly bring us all up to speed uh, as to what is the purpose of the demonstration and precisely what we will be going and doing together over here. So with that intent in mind, let me go into our folder. So I have a folder of files and folders as you can see. And this particular folder has got two further subfolders inside it. And if I open the folder for to organize, I can see that I have a couple of files lying over here. Four text files to be precise. Objective of this demonstration is going to be picking up these files one by one iterating over them, uh, showing the file names one by one to the end user and then presenting the user with a couple of options. The first option being does he want to copy the file. If the user says he wants to copy the file, then we further ask him that which is the location where he wants the file to be copied to and subsequently the file is copied into that location. In case the user says he wants to rename the file, then we go and uh, ask him what is the new name he wants to give the file and subsequently the file is renamed accordingly. And last but not the least if the user says he wants to delete the file then we uh, do a double check with him, confirm with him that does he actually want to delete the file and then we allow him to go ahead and do the deletion. So these are a couple of things that we would be doing during the course of this demonstration. Moreover, apart from this Let's say we uh, the user wanted a copy or a rename or a delete operation and for some XYZ reasons the operation did not get carried through successfully. Then we will also give the user a ch uh, you know the complete information that you know whether the operation happened or did not happen so that you know the user has a complete picture a complete idea as to whether the operation happened or not. Now once this operation has been done, some files will be copied, some would be renamed, some would be deleted, no point, you know, so as all of us would have already guessed, this will, you know, turn the folder upside down. And if one wishes to, you know, see a log or maybe a record of what were the original files which were lying inside that particular folder, then that becomes difficult with all the information now copied or renamed or deleted. So before we actually go and do the copy, rename or delete operation, we will also undertake this additional activity where we will open this Excel and we will perform two actions. We will capture the current directory name inside this folder and we will capture the file name and its extension inside this folder so that uh, we have a complete log, you know, that we had all these files with their extension names properly captured and recorded inside, inside this Excel so that you know that what was the original set of files lying in this particular directory so that uh, later on in case you wish to maybe do some record checking or audit for that reason, then this could be a helpful document to achieve that. From the point of view of our demonstration, it will also help you. It will also help all of us do a quick recap of working with Excel. So like I said, multiple benefits to be achieved over here. So let me go now and uh, open the primary folder within which we need to work which is files and folders, folder to organize. So like I said, we need to keep picking up these files one by one and keep writing, uh, doing the operations as in copying the file to some other folder or renaming the file or deleting the file as per the user's wish or specification. 
So, uh, back inside our good old task editor, since the objective involves picking up all the files one by one and uh, you know iterating over the contents of the folder, so obviously a loop again would be in effect. So, I'll click on the loop command over here and inside this loop command, I have an option loop each file in a folder which we will proceed to use in this particular demonstration. So, loop each file in a folder is what I will be using. So, let's go and get started with the same. So, loop each file in a folder. I drag this command over here. And here you need to specify the folder name over which we will be iterating. So, that folder is this one, folder to organize. So, I am going to copy this path of this folder and put it over here. This is the folder over which we wish to iterate. Loop each file in a folder. We've given the path of the folder over which you want to iterate. And I'm going to go and save it. So that's the folder over which you want to iterate. Pick up the files one by one and go over it. Now within this start loop and loop, you can see I am again getting a comment entry. The comments always, you know, telling us that which variable will be useful in the current context within the current loop. So, you can see it is already showing us the file name dot extension variable combination would be relevant in this context because it will tell us that which is the file over which we are currently iterating. So, let us just, you know, quickly have a run through this folder and see if we can bump the file names and directory names uh, onto the screen just for our uh, reference. So, I would like to display two things. One is a directory name over which we are iterating. For that, we have a variable called current directory. This variable gives me the current directory over which we are currently uh, iterating. And the other variable which we are interested in is the file name uh, and extension variable combination which we want to showcase, which will show us that which is the current file over which we are currently going over. And that is file name dot extension. These are the two variables. So, directory getting shown by the current directory variable, file name extension getting shown by the file name dot extension variable combination. And we can save it. We can save it from the top. Give it a name. What's a good name? Uh, this would be files and folders demo and we can go and save it. Let's go and run this one. So, here we go about running this. So, that is showing me the, if I can open that folder location in the background. See, the directory name is going to be constant because uh, we are going to be running through this directory only. But the file name will keep changing. First file, file1.txt. Second time, it is file2.txt. As you can see, folder remaining constant. Then file3 and then file4. So, as you can see, you are able to pick up the values and you are able to, you know, bump them off the screen, as I would say. So, that is a successful run of our loop over which we are picking up all the files one by one from this folder, bumping the values off the screen. So, this is our first part of the demonstration, or intermediate stage as I would say. Now, our objective is to uh, enhance the script. First of all, we do not want to bump the values on the screen. We want to write these values inside an Excel sheet, so that we can have a record of information that we were processing. So, with that effect in mind, with that point in mind, I am going to go inside Excel, because it is an Excel that you wanted to go and record all this information in the first case. I am going to take open spreadsheet command and keep it before the start loop. Open spreadsheet, keep it before the start loop. Which is the start loop you want to work, which is the folder you wish you wish to work. So, that is going to be C drive. Uh, that folder is folder organize. So, this is the folder from which we wish to 
organize and go over. So I've just pointed to that for to organize and I'm going to go and open it. So I can probably copy the path over here. Um, oh, my bad. So, C drive, training files, wrong location. I need to pick up this file, files and folder of the XLS. I was out of the way. So, as you can see, I'm pointing to this Excel sheet. I want to open this sheet where and I'm going to be going and logging all this information in. So, I'm going to be logging all the information inside this Excel and that is where we are currently and we can go and save it. So open spreadsheet command, there it is, right click and move it up. So we open the spreadsheet and as we did earlier, we will now proceed to go and make the cell A1 as the active cell. We will follow the same process that we did last time, you know, when we touched base with Excel so that, you know, uh, all of us already are aware of that process. So it will be a quick recap, quick touch base with a couple of things we already did. So open the spreadsheet, open, go to cell A1. We want to go and start writing from cell A1. So I'm going to say go to cell and start writing from cell A1. So this is what we want. So open the spreadsheet, go to cell A1. This is what you want to do. And this message box I can probably go and disable now because I guess I've already done that because it's no longer required relevant because now we will be writing those values inside the Excel sheet rather than throwing the values on the screen. And going forward, now I want to write the current directory name in the first column and the file name and extension in the second column. So how do you assign a value to a particular Excel cell? It is set cell. So again set cell coming in and in set cell in cell value, I want to assign the value of current directory. That takes care of the current directory coming over here. Then you want to go one cell to the right. Navigate one cell to the right. So we will say go to cell. One cell to the right will take us one cell to the right over here. And then once we reach on this cell, in this particular cell we want to lock two information file name and extension. File name dot extension needs to be logged in over here. So we will put that. So I say set cell and here we want to store information as in file name extension. This is what is needed. So first column contains the directory name, second column contains file name and extension. So far so good. Once both these values have been written over here, then from here you want to go one cell below and beginning of the row like we did earlier last time also, so that we can reposition for the next row to be entered. So for that, you will again as usual drag a go to cell, we will say go to one cell below, it will take us one cell below. And then again go to cell, beginning of the row, that about does it. So open the spreadsheet, go to cell A1 and then that is followed by a loop. We are looping over each file in that folder. So that gives me the file name and extension, picking up all the files one by one. Uh, to identify the current file in perspective, we use the file name and extension variable combination. First is current directory name using set cell. Then we go one cell to the right, set cell, assign the file name and extension over here. Then go to cell, one cell below and then go to cell, beginning of the row. Same set of actions that we had done earlier also uh, while working with Excel. And that about does the job of logging the file information in the, inside the Excel spreadsheet. Once that is done, I can go and close the spreadsheet, make it the last line over here and I can go and save it. Now I'm going to go and save this script and let's go and take it for a you know quick run. Like I said, wherever we have an intermediate step, we can always, we should always go and run it so that we can have a 
proper log of information that whether or not you know we were able to get the information properly captured so I'm going to go ahead and run it and let's see what happens did I click on it uh, let me do it again ah, that's better there we go and that was kind of fast let me just go ahead and open this Excel over here I can just open this yes you can see we got all the information over here you can have a quick run again if you wish to went off kind of uh, very fast so I'm going to save it close it and let me just go and run it again for everybody's benefit running it again that's open and closed also if I open this Excel I can see all my current directory names and my file name and extensions over here and this is precisely what we wanted so as you can see we were able to take information from an Excel sheet and we were able to go uh, we were able to t uh, record information into an Excel sheet successfully that is basically what was the purpose of this demonstration so far we were able to log all the file names and directory names inside an Excel we were able to iterate over a folder pick up all the files one by one and do this logging so far so good but our ultimate objective does not end over here this is just one part of the job the ultimate objective is to uh, ask the user further after this file information has been logged let me just take a moment and see you know, whether I have deleted all this stuff so after all this file information has been logged one by one we will go and ask the user do you want to copy the file do you want to rename the file do you want to delete the file and depending on whatever operation the user chose that operation should be executed so that is what we further want to add over here so to be able to do this I need to be able to go and create some variables which I we will then proceed to go and you know use over here so that is the larger objective at hand larger game plan at hand so for that I'm now I'm going to click on add and we are going to go and create a variable which we'll name as choice choice variable is one which will you know contain uh, the user's choice whether he wants to copy whether he wants to rename or whether he or she wants to delete so that's my first variable if the user says he wants to copy the file to some XYZ location then I need to be able to capture the folder location where I want this file to be copied to and that I uh, will capture inside this copy folder so copy folder is my uh, variable which will hold the folder location where you want the file to be copied if the user says he wants to rename the file then uh, whatever new name he wants to give that file that is going to be captured inside this variable rename file so a variable for that purpose and last but not the least if the user says he wants to delete the file like I discussed earlier uh, in case I missed uh, nevertheless just for everybody's information if you perform a deletion operation using our software it is a one way ticket it goes directly out does not go to the recycle bin so you have to be careful over there in case let's say user accidentally press delete we would like to give the user a chance to do a course correction and for that we have a confirm delete uh, button that uh, confirm delete operation where we are double checking with the user asking him does he actually want to delete and only if he you know uh, iterates reiterates that yes I definitely do want to delete then only we uh, go ahead and do the deletion so that's the process so those are our four variables choice confirm delete copy the folder and rename files four variables that we have created over here 
this is basically what we wanted. So, now that we have these four variables over here, which will allow us to you know do the required operation, let us begin our actual work over here. For that, I am going to go inside if else and inside of if else, we will go and call a variable command if else variable or rather my bad. First of all, we have to go and check with the user what does he want to do? Does he want to copy? Does he want to rename? Or does he want to delete? So, I am going to drag a prompt for value command over here. Prompt for value allows us to interact with the user. It is a way by which we can interact with the user, ask him his inputs. So, that is something what prompt for values allows us to do. And this window can be made to open on top of any particular window. Since we are not fussy about that, we will choose don't write in any window so that the user can open this on any particular window of its own choice. So, prompt for value, we will say enter. Um, maybe what we will do is we will show the user the file name and extension. Let us do that. Show the user the file name and extension and once we show the user file name and extension we can present him or her with three choices which you would have already guessed first does he want to copy the file second does he want to rename the file third does he want to delete the file three options copy rename or delete and once the user has seen the file name, he is in a better state to make this decision. And whatever the user chooses, first, second, or third, for copy, renaming, and deleting respectively, that value is assigned to the variable choice. So that is what we are doing at this stage. So the user's input, whether he wanted to copy the file, or rename the file, or delete the file, has been successfully taken by us. Now, we will go and bring in our if else command, wherein we want to go and ask the user, you want to basically check what is the choice the user made, did he make choice as 1? If choice is equal to 1, that means the user showed his inclination that he wanted to copy the file to some other x, y, z location. So, if choice is 1, that means user wants to copy this file out. So, if the user wants to copy this file out, then we have to go and ask him where does he or she wants this file to be copied out to. So, for that, we basically need the folder location where the user wants this file to be copied to. And for that, we have the prompt for folder command. So, I am going to say prompt for folder. Here, we are going to ask the user. Which folder do you want to copy the file to? So, we are just going and asking the user that which is the folder where he wants the file to be copied out to. And that folder location is captured inside this variable copy folder. So, that is one part of the job. Kindly note that at this point, we have just got the folder name where we want this file to be copied to. We have not actually gone and copied the file to that location. That has yet to be done. To be actually able to go and copy the file to some XYZ location, we have to go inside files and folders and there is a copy files command which will allow us to do that. So, I drag a copy files command and which is the file which has to be copied out to? So, the file which has to be copied out to is, so the current file in perspective, the file which we are working with is pointed out using this variable combination current directory backslash file name dot extension. 
So we are saying within the current directory, you have a file by the name of file node extension. That is how you refer to the current file. Because file node extension gives us the file name over which we are currently iterating. Current directory gives us the directory name. Now if you just give file name dot extension, then the software starts looking for the file in its application path area where it will not find the file and hence an error. So you have to prefix it with the current directory variable followed by a backslash and that gives us the complete path. So take the file and its extension from the current directory and where do you wish to go and keep this particular file? We wish to copy this file into the location copy folder as specified by the user. This is just what we got from the user uh, inside the copy folder via the prompt for folder command which we just executed in the previous line. So we are saying take the file lying in the current directory. The current file is accessible via file name or extension variable combo. Take it and copy it into this copy folder location and that will copy the file into that location file is copied. After the file has been copied, now we also mentioned that we would do a double check. We would verify the user, confirm the user that whether or not the file got copied successfully. And for that, we need to check whether the file was copied or not. So for that, we will use this if else file exists command. So I click on browse. Uh, excuse me, if file exists. So which file should exist so that we can confirm that yes, copy operation is a success. Let's think logically. Where has the file to be copied to? It has to be copied to copy folder. So file is lying inside copy folder. What's next? What is the location of what is the name of the file? Are you changing the name of the file in this particular exercise? No. The name of the file remains same as in file name dot extension. So the name of the file is constant. So we say inside copy folder, that is the location where you want this file to be copied to there should be a file by the name of file node extension. If that condition is true, if such a file does indeed exist, then, then our copy operation is a success and we can notify the user about the same. So we will say message box and here I'm going to say copy operation was a success. Otherwise, otherwise, else, else, message box, copy operation was a failure. Either it was a success and it was not a success, then obviously it has to be a failure. So, in both cases, we have to inform the user so that the user is clear about what he is doing, why he is doing and you know the purpose and objective is clear. So that is us doing the copy operation. What now we have done so far? We open the spreadsheet, we have locked the current file name, then we ask the user uh, after showing him the current file name that do you wish to copy, name, delete and uh, then we, when, if he says that yes, he wants to copy the file, we are further asking him which folder do you want to copy this file to, which is assigned to our variable copy folder over here. Subsequently, the file is copied to that location and then we are checking that does the file file error extension exist under this location copy folder. If it does, then you say copy operation success. Otherwise, you say copy operation failure. So this is something about our copy operation. This is only one of the three operations that you are supposed to do. So now that copy is done, we will proceed to now go and discuss about the rename operation. So I am going to select from if to this end if. I am again going to take a copy operation. Uh, I am going to copy these lines, excuse me. So oops, see daisy, just a moment. This end loop was supposed to be here. Sequence of command has to be absolutely right to prevent any anomaly. So I am just going and taking all these statements. 
I can do a copy from here, I can click on this end if and I can do a paste right over here. And that does our first part of the job which was our copy and after copy the next thing that we want to go and do now is rename. So the first one is copy and now we will proceed to go and do rename. Choice 1 is for copying and now starting with choice 2. So open this choice 2. So if choice is 2 then what do you want to do? We want to basically go and rename the file. So we will make some changes so that the script is up to date and reflects this uh, rename operation. So instead of prompt for folder I will make it prompt for value. And here we will go and say again don't write in any window because we are uh, we don't want this pop up to come on top of any particular specific window. And here we can go and tell the user something like uh, what's a good name? Prompt for value we will say um, rename file. So we will show the user the file name and extension again file name and extension we are showing the user again and we will ask the user something like what is the new name you want to give to this file. So we are showing the user the file name and extension and then we are asking that what is the new name that you want to give this file and that is going to be assigned to our variable over here which is rename file. So prompt for value don't pop up this in top of any window show the user file name and extension ask him what is the new name you want to give this file and that is assigned to existing variable rename file and you save it. So that is that part of the job. Once this file has, so that is basically asking the user what is the new name you want to give, you want to give this file and subsequently we have to rename the file. So I am going to say rename files, current directory file node extension, rename it to rename file variable. So whatever new name the user wanted we have given that name over here to this variable as in rename file this is what we wanted. Then what's next? Next we want to check whether this file got renamed or not. So that's the next option that you want to exercise. So I'm going to double click on this. If file exists, so which file should exist so that we can verify, we can say that yes, this rename operation was done successfully. File has been renamed. Let's again think logically. Are we renaming the file in this folder or some other folder? So the folder is not changing. So the file would be retained in the current directory only. What are the new name you are giving to this file? The new name that we are giving to this file is inside rename file. So under the current directory we should have a file by the name of rename file. This is basically what we want. So if file exists, a file by the name of rename file in the current directory, then message box you can say something like rename operation was a success. Otherwise message box rename operation was a failure. That is us going and doing a rename operation. So what do we do? We ask the user prompt message. We showed him the file name extension, ask him for the new name. Subsequently we call the rename file command where we rename the file. Then we are checking that does the file by the new name exist in the current directory. If it does, you say rename operations exist. Otherwise, you say rename operation failure. That is the rename command coming into the picture and we were able to go and accomplish that too successfully. So far, so good. What else? One more operation pending, one more operation remaining to go and that is deletion. So I am going to go and select all these lines and I am going to say copy this, click on end if and do a paste so that we can modify this rename operation so that it becomes a deletion thing. Time to go and do a deletion activity. So let's go and begin with deletion now. Choice equal to 2 happened last time. 
Now we want to go and make it choice equal to 3. So if choice equal to 3. So if choice is 3, that means user wanted the file to be deleted. That is the deletion operation. So if choice is 3, then like we discussed earlier, if in case user has chosen to delete the file, we will give the user a chance of doing a course correction uh, as in asking him that are you certain that you want to delete? If he still persists that yes, I want to go ahead and do the deletion, then yes, we will go ahead and delete the file. So that is basically what we are planning to do. So if choice is equal to 3, what we will say is prompt for yes, no. Prompt for yes, no, you know, is very clear. In yes, no format. Do you want to delete? Yes. Do you want to delete? No. No ambiguity over there. So, here we are going to go and say confirm deletion yes about deletion no. Confirm deletion yes about deletion no. Those are our two set of actions over here. Confirm deletion yes about deletion no. Whether the user chooses to delete or not is captured inside the variable confirm delete. This is what we are doing. Confirm the deletion yes about the deletion no. Whether the user chooses to delete or not goes inside the variable confirm delete. This is where we are. And I save it. So this is what we are saying prompt for yes no. Confirm deletion yes about deletion no. Output goes inside confirm delete variable. And once you have done this, First thing you want to do is you want to go and check did the user still persist on going ahead and doing the deletion. So you drag if it's variable command and we will now proceed to go and check our confirm delete command. So, I am going to say if confirm delete is equal to yes. If confirm delete is equal to yes, then all these actions will get embedded between these two lines. So, if choice is 3, then prompt for yes no confirm deletion yes about deletion no put inside the confirm delete variable. If confirm delete is equal to yes, that means the user wanted us to go ahead and do the deletion. So, if confirm delete is equal to yes, then you go and do the delete operation. So, in the install rename file, they'll call delete files. Everything already is in place, and that's it. One switch from rename to delete, and job is done. So, we ask the user again, do you want to do a deletion? capture the output and confirm delete variable. If it says yes, we go ahead and do the deletion. And now we want to check, did the deletion operation happen successfully or not? For that, I have to check for, uh, you know, again for a condition over here. Now for deletion, things happen the other way around. In deletion, for deletion to be successful after the deletion has been done, the file should not exist over there. So, here I will choose file does not exist. Which file should not exist? Under current directory, the file by the file name, file name dot extension, this file should not exist. So, if after deletion, if after deletion, under the current directory, the file name dot extension, this file does not exist, that means our deletion operation is a success. So, if file does not exist, then we will say over here deletion operation was a success. Otherwise, deletion operation was a failure. It is like this. This is basically what we are looking at. And that is about our script, which will allow us to go and do some uh, deletion options. 
So we are checking if choice is 3, that means user exercises the option to delete the file. We are asking him, yes or no, do you want to confirm the deletion, yes, about the deletion, no, assign it to the variable, then we check if the user persisted on deleting, then we went and delete the file and then we check if this file does not exist because after deletion the file should not be there because then the purpose of deletion is defeated even if they, so if the file you know exists even after deleting it so if after deletion if this file is no longer there then deletion is a success otherwise deletion is a failure and last but not least we close this spreadsheet so this is basically our script which should do the job at hand so let's go and check whether we are able to go and um, you know, get the desired results, as I would say, at the end of the day, that is something we are all looking forward to. So, let's go and take this script for a quick spin. Uh, do a certain beforehand that all the end loops and open loops and all the nested, if nestings are proper and in order, uh, so as to avoid any errors later. So, let's go and run this script and here we go. So, we are running it. that begins the play first row written in opens the excel and we are getting a prompt which has gone somewhere in the behind uh, what operation you want to do copy rename deletes aspect of the first file so i'll say first i want to copy so i will say one is for copying open it which folder do you want to copy this file to so which is the folder where you want to copy this file uh, i'm going to say i want to copy it in this folder so oops uh, why is it already there? Just a moment. Let me just copy this one, give this location, run it. You can see the file has just been copied. Copy operation success, so file did get copied through going forward. And then we should have the next command coming in. Rename. So, rename will happen at that location itself. So, I am deliberately opening the phone in the background so that we can see. First file was copied, now it is on file 2. So, file 2, I want to, let us say rename. So, choice 2, I will take. So, now it is saying, what is the new name you want to give? So, rename will happen right in front of us. That is why I have deliberately opened that folder so that we can see the action also happening in the background. Also, the software is confirming us very well that this operation is happening so it is not a mandate that you have to keep it open in the background but just to you know double check and confirm you on that so rename file 2.dxt i click on this and i can see that file has been renamed success then file 3 is for again the next file has been picked up this is deletion so i'll choose to delete this third file third is for deletion file 3.txt Confirm deletion, yes. About deletion, you yes. I want to delete this file. Click on it and the file should vanish from there. It's gone as you can see. File 3 is no longer here. Last but not the least is file 4. What do you want to do with file 4? Maybe I want to uh, rename it again. Choice 2 is for rename. What is the new name you want to give this file? So, we will say let's give it a name as rename file 4.txt. And I click on it. Rename operation success. You can see the file has been renamed. And that goes and does the job. So we were able to go and do all these operations. Some files were renamed. One was deleted. One was copied as we saw. If I go inside my Excel, I should see all the file names would have been properly locked in advance. This is just what we needed. So this was our script which allowed us to you know, go and rename files, allowed us to delete files, allowed us to copy some files from one location to another and that is precisely the purpose of this demonstration at hand which we wish to showcase. So, I do hope uh, we are all good over here. Like I said, this demonstration, you know, touched base with a lot of things. You had looping, you had if constructs, you had prompts. A uh, good revisiting of Excel and some other features. Uh, a good way to touch base with a lot of points uh, at the same uh, time. So, I hope everybody is comfortable over here. So, until we meet again, uh, thank you.